Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to a brand new Roblox Studio video. My name is Floppy, and in today's video, we'll be going over how to make a jump scare in Roblox Studio. This sort of system is commonly used in many different types of horror games aimed to increase tension while the players are playing the game. This is one of many ways you can create a jump scare in Roblox Studio. For a more advanced jump scare, you'd likely use animations, but that's something we'll be covering in a future video. Well, without further ado, let's begin the tutorial. Alrighty, so for starters, we want to make sure that our explorer and properties are enabled. If our explorer and properties are not enabled, head up to the top bar here, click on view and enable explorer and properties and they should show up somewhere over your screen. So how it is going to work is there's going to be a part and we can kind of almost call this a little bit of a pressure plate. This will be our part that the player is going to be walking over, which will then activate the jump scare. An image will then pop up on our screen and that will be our jump scare. So what we're going to be using is we're going to be using a frame with an image label and then putting our image that we want to scare the players with onto the screen. We're not going to be going anything too in detail with animations. As I've mentioned, that will be covered in a future video. So now that you've kind of got a little bit of a better idea, let's go and create the system. So this is going to be our main, I guess you can almost call it touchpad, pressure plate, whatever you really want to call it. So you can go and adjust it to however you like. It really doesn't matter on how you do it or create it. It's all going to work the same. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating like a little bit of a wall here. So say we've got a wall this side, a wall that side, and this is our main hallway. And then we're walking through a dark hallway at the moment. If a player touches this part while walking down this hallway then the jump scare is going to happen so i'm going to keep it just like this and now i'm going to go down here to the properties and i'm going to disable can collide so the player can walk straight through the part the player will not know the part is there so what i'm going to go do now is i'm now also going to go and change the transparency to 0.5 just to show you on how it actually kind of works in a little bit of a better demonstration we're then going to click on the plus button next to our part here and we're going to insert a normal script now we're going to go and leave this normal script inside of our part just for now and we're going to go set up everything else and then we'll come back to the scripts. So now we're going to head over to our replicated storage. We're going to click on the plus button next to our replicated storage and insert a remote event. We're going to go and rename this remote event to let's call this, uh, let's just call this jump scare. We want to go and rename that correctly inside of our replicated storage just like that. We then want to go and create our GUI which is actually going to be our jump scare. So we're going to go to our starter GUI, click on the plus button, screen GUI, then inside of our screen GUI we're going to click on the plus button and insert a frame and then we're going to go and move this frame uh, for demonstration purpose just so we can kind of see what's still happening is I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so you guys can still see the background main screen but for you you're going to want to go and put that over your entire screen because you don't want the player to see any of the map when they get the jump scare. I'm now going to click on the plus button next to our frame and insert a image label. Now this is going to be our main jump scare. Obviously you go and size your image correctly, you go and make it equal or whatever the situation is so that it looks good. Anyway so we've got our main frame and everything sorted here for now so what I'm going to go and do is I'm just going to go and disable our frame because we no longer need that. Obviously to go and change the image you go down here to the properties Go to your image and then you go and put in whatever your image ID is. I'm not going to bother changing the image ID. There's no need. So I'm going to go and disable our frame here for now. So I'm going to go click on our frame and disable it just like that. Then I'm going to head over here to our frame again. I'm then going to click on the plus button and insert a local script just down there. Or you can go search up local script. Either way works. We have now got our normal script here in our part this part over here and now we've also got a local script inside of our frame so we're firstly going to be starting with our normal script inside of this part right here alrighty so now that we've got our normal script inside of our part you want to go down to the description of this video copy and paste the code that's in the description it's going to be called something like script one you want to go and copy script one bring it back to roblox studio remove all the previous code and then paste in the new code now the script is very basic and simple so I'm just going to quickly go over it here so you can get a little bit of a better understanding and change things accordingly so that it works for your game. Alrighty so first of all we're going to be identifying our local jump scare event. So that is the event that we created and put in our replicated storage. So we want to go and change your event name to whatever your um, remote event you went and changed your remote event to. So I want to change mine to jump scare so I'm going to change your event name to jump scare just like that and now we have identified our jump scare event. 
Here on line three, it goes script.parent.touch.connects function. Hit that creates a function. We are then identify our local player, which equals local player equals game.players. Get player from character, hit.parent. So the, or I guess you could say the player is the item that hit our main part here. That is our player. Then down here it goes local humanoid. So that is basically what's inside of our main player that controls your walk speed, that controls your health, that controls your jump power, your humanoid controls all of that. So now we're identifying our local humanoid. So we're going local humanoid equals hit dot parent find first child humanoid. That is identifying our humanoid. If humanoid, then if our humanoid has been located inside of our parent or our hit dot parent find first child humanoid, if our humanoid has been found, it then goes jump scare fire client and then player. So basically, what this is doing is it is firing this client right here. It is causing this um, event to fire in our replicated storage. Now, in the local script, what we're going to be doing is basically detecting when the event has been fired, then something will happen. So that's what we're going to go and do now. So now for the same thing for the local script, we want to go down to the description of this video, copy and paste the code that is in the description. It's going to be called script2. Bring it back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code, and then paste in the new code. Now it is fairly somewhat similar to what we were just working with, but this is basically controlling what happens when our player actually touches the part right here that is triggered and fires the event from the normal script. So we're now here in our local script and now up here on line one we're identifying uh, a few bits and bobs here that we need for this script to operate correctly. So local jump scare equals game.replicated storage your event name. So remember our jump scare event, jump scare, jump scare event, same thing. We just go and change whatever our, we go and change your event name to whatever your event name that we went and changed it to was. So mine was jump scare, whatever your event was called. Again, we're identifying our local player, but now we're going to our local player, which is game.players.local player. So local activator part equals game.workspace.yourpart name. So go and change your part name to whatever the part that this actually is right here. So I didn't go and actually rename this. So I'm going to go and change this to, uh, let's just call this cheese. This part will be called cheese. So now we go over to our local script. We're now going to go and change our activator part, which is called cheese. Your part name, I'm going to go and change that to cheese. So then it goes down here on line five and it does jump scare dot on client event. So once that has been fired, so once our um, uh, remote event has been flat fired on the uh, on the client event, it creates a function. Then it goes script dot parent dot visible equals true. So what this is basically doing now is this is controlling our GUI. That is controlling our jump scare. So it goes script dot parent dot visible equals true. So it goes to our script. Keep in mind we're now working on the local script. So it goes script dot parent and then it goes down to the property which is visible which is right here and then it makes it true so at the moment our visibility of our frame is false if we had to go and make it true which is meaning ticked it will now show then what we've what I've actually gone and included here is because the player may move around a little bit more we don't necessarily want the jump scare to be in the same place over and over again or they're going to know it's there so what we do is we make this jump scare event a one-time thing so once the player has gone and run through this alleyway as I was explaining or the hallway as I was explaining before if they have to return that way they're not going to get the same jump scare we're now deleting the part so what it does here you can remove this if you want but I'll quickly explain what it does it goes to our activator part and then it destroys it from the game so that there is simply no longer this part there and no, no remote event can be fired. Basically, it destroys the part, then it waits one second, so that is how long our jump scare is on the screen. Um, at the same time, you want to give the player a fright, but then you don't really want to keep it on the screen for a long period of time. That's why I'm saying only maybe a few seconds you could have. I've just got it at one second just for testing purposes, but maybe even if you put it for two, three, four seconds, I think that should be fine, but it's entirely up to you. That is our wait time there. That is how long the jump scare is going to be on the player's screen. So exactly here, similar to what happened on line six is happening on line nine. It goes to our script.parent.visible and now it changes it back to false, making our jump scare invisible. Now, uh, something else I'm going to mention here just for customizable purposes, if you were wanting to add audio to your jump scare, which I feel add, makes it like a thousand times better, it is very easy to do. So I'm just going to quickly go over it here. What you can go do is you can go and write local sound 
you go and change it to how you like. Local sound is going to equal uh, gain dot sound service and then whatever your sound name is. Um, so if you've got your sound name of honk, then it's going to be called honk right here. But if this is only if you're wanting a sound to play. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to just go and write in here now. So this is going to be making our sound play when the event is actually filed. So we're going to go and do sound um, uh, dot play. Oh, sorry. It's been a while since I've done a bit of scripting. So there we go. Sound play. That is now going to play our sound. So whatever sound you've gone in and inserted inside of your sound service will go and play now here once the event has been fired. Alrighty, so now that we've covered all of that, we're going to go now and test it out. So I'm going to close up these scripts here, make sure you've got everything correctly aligned and um, named, and then we're going to go click on play to go test it out. Alrighty, I'm now in the base plate. By the way, new UGC items out in the shop now if you do want to go check them out. We've got the official floppy plushie and a fish backpack, so feel free to go check this out. But anyway, Right, we're in here by the base plate. You can see we've got no jump scare on our screen. Our can collide is off for the part. We now put it in a situation. We're in a hallway. Oh, goodness me, I've got no idea. By the way, you can make your transparency one. I'll show you that it does still work, even work though the transparency is one. But right now we've got it at 0.5. So I'm walking along. Oh, it's all dark and whatever the situation is. I now go and touch that part or walk through the part. The part disappears. Our jump scare appears and after that, our main part that is triggering the jump scare disappears because it is a one-time event. Again, you can go and change that if you want. And there we go. Our jump scare appeared, waited one second, disappeared, and then our main activator went and disappeared as well. Now, obviously, as I've mentioned, with audio, it will make it a whole lot better. So if you want some audio, go and follow the step that I mentioned earlier. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one last demonstration here just to show you that even without any transparency it will continue to work. So let me just make a little bit of a part because I'm going to, I'm going to have no idea where this is. And let's go give it a try. So here's our alleyway that I was mentioning. We walk through here. We've got, we're completely, we don't, our player does not know where this part is. A standard player wouldn't even know what's going on. Without their knowledge they continue walking and then they get a sudden jump scare just like that. If you guys are a little bit lost and you're needing a little bit of assistance here with today's tutorial, please do reach out to our ticket support team on my Discord server and we are more than happy to help you out. But anyway guys, that is going to be it here for today's video. If you did enjoy, I'd appreciate if you do consider subscribing to the channel, turning on the notification bell and also do consider liking the video, I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see everyone in the next Roblox Studio video.